Hello everyone, my name's Catherine Smith. Welcome to my garden. Now if I'd been recording this yesterday, I would probably have been in shorts and a t-shirt with my sunglasses on. But instead today I'm on my winter coat with my umbrella. But that doesn't matter because we're going to be thinking about God's creation today. And the cold and the wet and the rain are as much a part of God's creation as the sun and the heat. And in fact, our vegetable garden has been really pleased to have a good drink of water today. The very first book in the Bible, the very first words, tell us about how God created the world. And we're going to listen to that story now. But I'm not going to read from the Bible itself. I'm going to read from one of my very favourite books. Wonderful Earth by Nick Butterworth and Mick Inkpen. First of all, there was darkness, nothing, zero. Then God said, let there be light. And there was. Then suddenly there were stars and planets and galaxies and comets and meteors and great clouds of gas, all whizzing about and going bang. It was like an enormous firework display. And God said, that's not bad for a start. Out of all the millions and billions and zillions of planets, God picked out one to be special. Why this one? I don't know. It wasn't even big. It was the Earth. God made the Earth spin, which made the day and night. And he made the moon go around the Earth, which made the months. And he made the Earth go around the sun, which made the years. Then with his finger, he gently nudged the North Pole a little to one side, which made the summer turn to winter and back again. It was all very complicated, like making a giant clock, but it all worked perfectly. On the earth, God made dry land and water. The land had mountains and canyons and deserts and huge exploding volcanoes. The water was even better. God made rain and rivers and mist, waterfalls and hailstones and snow, icicles and icebergs and great oceans with enormous crashing waves just out of water. Then came the plants, little twiggly ones at first, too small to see. The plants grew and grew and grew until great forests spread right round the earth and the whole world turned green. It was very beautiful. There are all kinds of plants. Some had leaves like giant hands. Some had long spiky ones. Some had small feathery ones and some had no leaves at all. Some could grow in just one day and some lived for a thousand years. Some had lovely flowers and some had delicious fruit. Some had seeds as big as your head and some had seeds like dust. And some had seeds that whirled around like helicopters and grew into big, great big trees. But now the fun really started. God made animals. He made some black and white and some brightly coloured, some with lots of hair and some with lots of teeth, some who live in big groups and some who live by themselves, some with stripes and some with spots, some very big and some very tiny, some with horns made of hair, some with long necks, and some who are good at fishing, some that hiss and some that roar, some fat and grey, some tall and pink, some with rings on their tails and some with stings on their tails, some with tentacles and some with tusks, some who like it cold and some who like it hot. Some birds that can't fly and some fish that can. 
God made hummingbirds as small as bees and whales as big as buses, chameleons that can change to any colour, sloths that grow moss on their backs, parrots that can talk and swifts that sleep while they fly, moths that look like leaves and insects that look like sticks, skunks that smell disgusting except to other skunks, squirrels that fly and bees that dance, worms that eat mud and goats that eat anything, dolphins that smile, crocodiles that grin and hyenas that laugh, butterfly fish and parrot fish and lionfish and catfish and batfish and dogfish and hogfish, hairy caterpillars and bald eagles, and beavers that build dams and moles that dig tunnels, kangaroos that carry their babies in their pouches and pelicans with beaks like shopping bags, sharks with teeth like razors and beetles with antlers, gorillas as strong as ten men, jumping fleas and jumping spiders, toads that blow themselves up like balloons, electric eels and beetles that glow in the dark, bears that sleep all winter long, termites that make tall houses as strong as concrete, salmon that can swim up waterfalls, lizards like dragons, elephants with noses like hoses and squids that squirt ink. He made animals that sing and squawk and spout and hiss and hoot and howl and honk and chirp and peck and pounce and flap and fly and slide and slither and squirm and creep and crawl and prowl and growl and gallop and glide and dive and swoop and jump and hang and warble and squeak and roar. And he made the duck-billed platypus too. And he also made a load of animals you've probably never even heard of. And last but not least, he made something really wonderful. What do you think it was? Yes, he made you and me and everybody else. He made people. We're his masterpiece, his best effort. Hooray! In some ways, we're a bit like God. We can think and talk and make things. We're really very, very clever. We're so clever, we've even walked on the moon. Now you'd think with such a wonderful world to live in, we'd take good care of it, wouldn't you? Especially being so clever. But lately we haven't been making a very good job of it. We've chopped down the forests, we've filled the air with dirty smoke, we've made the rain turn sour, we've poisoned the rivers and the seas, and destroyed the places where animals live. We've even made the weather go wrong. That's not very clever, is it? Our poor old world isn't very well at the moment. It's in a terrible mess. We're spoiling this beautiful place that God gave us to live in. We must stop and think. Does he really want us to chop down the trees? Does he really want us to make all that smoke? How can we clean up the rivers and the rain? How can we look after the plants and the animals? Well, it won't be easy. But if we ask him to help us change, maybe, just maybe, the world can smile again. So today's craft activity, we'll be going to be making a vase of flowers. And if you look carefully, you'll see that some of the flowers are nice and brightly coloured. And they remind us of how wonderful God's creation is. The other flowers are a bit boring, really. And they remind us how we can spoil God's creation if we don't look after it. So what do we need? These are the things we need. A piece of cardboard such as an old cereal box, some pages from an old magazine, scissors, a glue stick, some sellotape, a pen, and then a variety of things, perhaps a few buttons or some foil tops, or maybe part of an egg box. And then finally, maybe a few sticks from the garden or a few lollipop sticks. The first thing to do is draw the outline of a, a flower petal on your piece of card. Just four petals, something a bit like that. And then if you cut it out 
and you're left with your template. So for our first flower, we're going to make one of the boring flowers that reminds us of how we can spoil God's creation. So just a piece of old magazine with just words on it and simply draw around your template. For each flower, you're going to need two sets of petals. Like that and then cut them out and then all we do is stick one on top of the other like that for the center of this flower I'm going to use an old piece of egg carton stick it on the middle and then for the stalk for this one I'll use an old lollipop stick it on the back and there's your first flower so now let's make one that's a bit more colorful and it doesn't really matter what the colors are or what the pictures are again two sets of petals one on top of the other and for the center of this one I'm going to choose a nice big bright pink button stick it on the middle give it a good press and for the stalk for this one, we'll use a twig from the garden. Maybe two pieces of tape for that one. There we go. A nice bright flower. And then it's really just a case of making as many as you want. there we have it, a vase of flowers. Let's just pray. Lord God, we thank you for your wonderful creation. We thank you for all the colours and the flowers and the plants and animals you have made. Help us to look after your world so that it may once again smile again. Amen. <laughs>